Yeah. 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 Shall we, yeah. shall we sing, can we sing happy birthday to Kathy? Yeah, let's do that yeah. and then we'll get on with the Good idea. Yeah. 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 to include you, Mike. Happy birthday, birthday to you. Happy birthday, birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. That's the first. Yeah. Oh, you, David, you, you as you well, Mike. It was yours on Friday. <laughs> oh. We also sung it for you as well. It was yours on Friday. My my birthday. No, no, that's Friday. No, yeah. just, oh, Mike. Mike, sorry. Mike. Oh, oh, yeah, don't worry about that. Yeah, yes, yes. Oh, fine. Yeah, yeah, don't worry. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to mute everyone and go to the share screen and. Um, Mutual. Okay. Thank you, Steve. So uh, welcome um, to our service this morning. Uh, today is Passion Sunday, and I'm trying to get my computer to obey me. Um, so today's Passion Sunday. Um, next week is Palm Sunday, and the following weekend is uh, Easter. So um, just to update you on our plan. So there will be this Sunday and next Sunday still on Zoom. And then uh, we will be back in, in church for Easter weekend. Um, but we'll endeavour to record at least one of the services so it can be sent out later for those who can't uh, attend. Um, so basically what we're doing, uh, I think it will come out in the magazine, but just in case you don't see it in time, uh, Good Friday will be a service at St Mary's Church, either inside or outside, depending on the weather, um, from two o'clock. Uh, which will be the last hour of the cross. On Easter Saturday afternoon, although it's not Easter Saturday, Easter Saturday will be the following Saturday, but you know what I mean. Uh, there is a service, uh, well, an Easter egg hunt, really, for um, our young families around um, uh, Hinton Churchyard, uh, starting at two o'clock, with a short uh, family focus uh, service at the end of it. Easter Sunday morning, we're going to have a sunrise service, but I do understand that dawn is slightly early on the sunrise. Um, so if you want to get there uh, for 6.30, um, that's when I'll actually start, although I'm told uh, you could get there at 6.15 and actually get to the dawn. Um, so if you're there early, I'll probably be there early anyway. Um, so if you want to come, that will be at St Mary's Church in the graveyard overlooking the, um, the valley. So that's 6.30 on Easter Sunday morning. Um, and uh, we'll be in uh, St. John's in Hinton at 9.30 that morning for uh, um, a service uh, followed by optional communion. Um, we will only give out the bread at the communion service, but that we will lay it on uh, this time. And then at 11 o'clock, we will be at St. Peter's Church. Uh, we'll have to be inside because there isn't enough outside space. Uh, we may have to control numbers. We may have to uh, send out tickets. I've, I've got to confirm that as yet. Um, but that will be Easter Sunday morning at 11 o'clock. And likewise, it will be an Easter Sunday morning service followed by uh, optional communion for those who want to stay. Um, so hopefully that will enable us to celebrate Chris, uh, Easter. And then uh, we're not intending to uh, close our doors again. We're intending to stay open from then onwards. Um, but for the time being, there will just be one service a Sunday uh, until we get um, probably to a part of the year where it's safer to do more than that. So for the time being, it will just be one Sunday, one Sunday service uh, at 10.30. But, but that's what's happening next weekend. Uh, we'll make sure all that goes out on the news sheet beforehand. So you know exactly what's happening on Easter weekend. So that's not next weekend, sorry. That's the weekend afterwards. Um, so thank you for coming this morning uh, and sharing with us in this uh, service. So I think that's all I have to do. Uh, Steve is going to share with us our first song and then we'll get on with the rest of our uh, service.
Thank you, Steve, for that. So uh, we'll carry on with our liturgy. Christ himself carried up our sins in his body to the tree so that free from sins we might live for righteousness. By his wounds we have been healed. So let us confess our sins. O oh God, you know my foolishness and my sins are not hidden from you. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let not the flood overwhelm me, nor the depths swallow me up. Let not the pit shut its mouth upon me. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Hear me, O Lord, as your loving kindness is good. Turn to me as your compassion is great. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. And may God, who delights to be merciful, turn to us and forgive us. May he keep us from all evil. Bless us with his presence and give us the desire to keep his command. Amen. Okay, um, uh, Karen, James or Lucas is going to share with us. Okay, hopefully you can hear. Uh, the reading is from John 12, um, beginning at verse 20. Jesus predicts his death. Now, there were some Greeks amongst those who went up to worship at the festival. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, with a request. Sir, they said, we would like to see Jesus. Philip went to tell Andrew. 
Andrew and Philip in turn told Jesus. Jesus replied, the hour has come for the son of man to be glorified. Very truly, I tell you, unless a grain of wheat fails, falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. Anyone who loves their life will lose it, while anyone who hates their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, my servant also will be. My father will honour the one who serves me. Now my soul is troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it was for this very reason I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it and will glorify it again. The crowd that was there and heard it said it had thundered. Others said an angel had spoken to him. Jesus said, this voice was for your benefit, not mine. Now is the time for judgment on this world. Now the prince of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to show the kind of death he was going to die. Amen. Thank you very much for that. So um, <clears throat> I want to speak to you about uh, that particular passage. Um, I'll uh, get rid of that. So this is a reading for today from the Gospel. Um, during Passion Tide, which is the, the two weeks leading up to uh, Easter, um, generally uh, in a more uh, sort of Anglican Catholic church, you'll probably have the whole of the gospel story uh, read uh, throughout this week and uh, then into Holy Week as well. Um, so we are getting a glimpse really of the story of Good Friday and of the uh, death of Jesus as he predicts it. But it doesn't start there. Our reading today starts with... Um, a picture of some Greeks who, of course, were Gentiles, so not Jews, um, and they were part of the worship at the festival that was going on. So the likelihood is that although they were Greeks, um, they had possibly um, converted to Judaism, which is why they were at the festival. And uh, it was possible to do that. You could never be a fully, fully a Jew unless you were uh, of the bloodline of the Jews. But you could convert to Judaism, which made you a kind of second class Jew, um, but you could still uh, convert to Judaism. They were called proselyte believers. And so the chances are these were um, Jewish believers, though they were Gentiles. And uh, it seems they came to Philip and uh, Philip and Andrew went to tell, tell Jesus. And their request was that they wanted to see Jesus. Um, the interesting uh, response from Jesus was, no, not that they couldn't see him. Of course they could see him. Everybody will see him shortly. And uh, the invitation for, is for all of us, whether we're Jews or Gentiles, male or female or whatever we are, uh, we are given the invitation to see Jesus. And it is in our seeing of Jesus for who he is and what he's done uh, that we come to faith. So Jesus in no way turns around to him and said, well, sorry, I'm only going to show myself to the Jews because, of course, we know that he wasn't. In fact, what Jesus did was uh, replied to them, uh, to the re this request, by saying uh, this rather cryptic thing, the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. So it's a good thing that they want to see Jesus. It's a good thing that they want to see him glorified. Uh, it's a good thing that they want to learn from him and be with him. Um, but, of course, he goes on to say to them, I tell you the truth, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. So what he's saying to them is that, yes, you will see my glory. You will see the Son of Man glorified. But the process uh, by which the Son of Man must come to his, his full glory is through suffering, is through dying. Uh, it is only possible to see the glory of God or the glory of Jesus through his suffering on the cross. And um, <clears throat> the invitation for us is to share in that suffering, which is why we've always uh, tried to do something throughout Holy Week, so that in some way, in a small way, we share in the suffering of Jesus um, during Holy Week until we come together to recognize his sacrifice on Good Friday and to enjoy the glory of the resurrection on Easter Sunday morning. 
Um, but we can only do that as witnesses. We can't do that as participants because it happened uh, 2000 years ago, but we can do it by faith as we willingly seek for the glory of God it, um, found in Jesus on his day of resurrection, recognizing that it comes only through suffering. It doesn't come without the suffering. And I think that is so apt with us at the moment because we are still uh, in lockdown. We're still struggling to find a way out of this. Yes, we're getting our vaccines, which has been an, an amazing achievement in such a short time. Um, but uh, we are still struggling to come out of uh, this pandemic that has affected the entire world and, and to see the way in which it's still affecting countries and people talking about a third wave and having to go back into lockdown, I suppose it makes you appreciate what we do have and the fact that we uh, are so far along over half the adult population of the UK now vaccinated at least once. But of course, the glory of the days when we can share together freely in parties, in social life, in uh, family gatherings, can only come uh, through this period of suffering. And so it gives us a tiny little picture of what it was like when Jesus responded to the Greeks, asking to see him uh, by saying, yes, you can see me, but remember, you can't see my full glory until you have experienced the extent of my suffering. Uh, and then uh, Jesus kind of uh, continues on that theme for a while. And and he says in verse 27, which is quite extraordinary, is it? Now my heart is troubled or my soul is troubled. And what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour. No, for it was this very reason that I came to this hour. This is his moment. This is the Kairos moment, this moment in time when all life will be changed because of what Jesus is about to endure and experience on our behalf. The, the, the death of the grain of wheat in the, in the soil, which produces a crop, is what he's referring to. This is what's going to happen unless Jesus goes through this sacrificial death uh, and this humiliation for our sake. Uh, we will not find forgiveness of sin and uh, vindication for those of us who will turn to him and life eternal. So this is the hour to which Jesus was always heading. So back in, in Mark chapter one, uh, remember Jesus said, the time has come, this, um, repent and believe in the Son of Man. That was another use of the word kairos in Greek, which means a, a moment in history that changes history. Uh, and this is another one found in John's gospel. Uh, Save me from this hour. No, it was for this very reason I came to this hour. And that literally is another kairos moment. This is the moment when all things will be changed and it's rather interesting there. I think this is the only time it's recorded in the Gospels where God actually speaks in response to what Jesus has said. And uh, God speaks and says, I've glorified it and will glorify it again. And it seems that some of the crowd just thought there was a, 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 loud, a loud, uh, thundering in the, in, in the heavens above Jesus, but others uh, felt that they heard the voice of an angel speaking. So I just wonder what that must have been like to be there at that moment where it seems like heaven was responding to what Jesus was saying. And then, of course, we get a full picture of what's about to happen and how salvation is only possible through the death of Jesus. So it's a hard path he has to tread, but it is also a glorious path. It's a hard path that often we as his disciples will have to tread, but it's a glorious path that leads to forgiveness and everlasting life. And then uh, it says in verse 31, now is the time for judgment on this world. So that's the first thing that happens on the cross of Jesus, that this world is brought to judgment. And the judgment is, will you believe or will you try and make it on your own? So judgment has come on the, at the death of Jesus. So his sacrificial death on the cross is the moment of judgment where we make up our minds. Will we follow Jesus through the hardship of the cross? in order to enjoy the joy of resurrection, or we will we reject him? Well, fortunately, we get more than one chance, but that's basically what happened on the cross. This is the moment of judgment. He goes on to say, now the prince of this world has been driven out, which is quite an extraordinary thing uh, to realize that actually Satan's uh, power that he once tried to reveal to Jesus in the temptations and when he took Jesus to a high place and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and says, 
if you bow down and worship me, I will give you all of these, kind of suggests that they were, they were his to give. But it seems now of the death of Jesus on the cross, which is confirmed by much of the New Testament, that actually the power and the authority of, of Satan was um, done away with, was destroyed, was removed, was cast out at the death of Jesus. So, so though he can still tempt us and, and test us, and though he can still um, try and make us uh, turn away from Jesus, he has no authority. Uh, and in order to combat the supposed authority, which is by word only of Satan, we just need to turn to Jesus at moments like that. And then the third thing Jesus does, so the first thing he does is uh, the world is brought to that moment of justice on the cross when sacrifice is made for the sins of the world. Secondly, Satan is cast out of his position of authority, whatever that may have been. And thirdly, that Jesus draws all the sheep to himself. So it says this again in the passage we read, when I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw all people to myself. So all of, all of God's sheep, all of Christ's sheep, will, will be drawn to Jesus by the image of the cross. So it's no, it's no accident that, strangely enough, the cross still symbolizes uh, everything that the Christian faith is about. Um, and, it, you know, in some ways it seems grotesque and gruesome that we, we have a, a picture and an image of uh, an instrument of torture and death. Uh, that actually becomes for us a picture of glory and victory and forgiveness. Um, but it is the cross to which we are drawn, uh, and through that we get to enjoy the day of resurrection with him. And uh, the, the last thing that, that happens in the death of Jesus is that the light, the glory of God shines through all that he does in those few days from Good Friday to Easter Sunday, uh, until the light shines through the darkness of that day, uh, bringing the joy of the day of the resurrection. And we now, as disciples of Jesus, live not in darkness, but we live in light. And uh, so all these things are happening here in this passage. And uh, so Jesus was preparing his disciples for what was about to take place. I'm not sure they fully understood it until it all took place, but he was still trying to prepare them for what was ahead. Maybe they didn't want to hear it. And, and you kind of wonder, um, you know, that the, the fact is that this was just at the beginning of uh, those final days. We've had the triumphal entry of Jesus. Uh, we have him talking to his disciples and then we have the last supper. So Judas was amongst those who heard Jesus say this in response to the Greeks uh, asking to see Jesus. So Judas was there with them, as was Peter, of course, who didn't uh, betray Jesus, but certainly denied knowing Jesus. And, and I wonder sometimes whether all this was a little bit too much for them to fully grasp. I guess um, if we had been told on March the 23rd, uh, 2020, uh, that we would be locked in our houses for most of the year, for most of the next 12 months. Um, most of us would either stick our fingers in our ears and pretend we hadn't heard it, or uh, we would think, well, they're exaggerating. Well, uh, to some degree, of course, we have had modicums of freedom. We did have last summer, but the possibility is, of course, that last summer led to the wave that came for us uh, in the winter this year. So uh, I guess we're still being encouraged to be cautious, even when all of us have had our second vaccines. There's still a, a word of caution and uh, advice from the government not to travel abroad. Well, seeing how uh, some of Europe has uh, not rolled out the vaccine uh, quite as fast, you, you wonder why would you um, want to go anywhere else at the moment? This is probably the safest place to be. Um, but of course, you know, this is the story of the gospel that through hardship, through sacrifice, through death is, is the only way to find and to see the glory of God. So there are moments when uh, life seems hard, life seems unfair, but we have to go through those in order to enjoy the days of glory and a thanksgiving and a blessing. So uh, let me just uh, finish with a short prayer and then uh, we'll turn back to our service. Father God, thank you that Jesus did give his disciples warning of what's to come, even though they were unable or unwilling to hear what he had to say. 
help us to realize that it is only by uh, sharing in the sacrifice of Jesus that we can share in the resurrection that, that he enjoyed on that third day. So, Father, may we uh, turn to the cross today. May we turn to you, give our lives to you, honor you, and seek your glory in this world uh, today. We ask that in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay. Um, so, actually, I, I do need to stop because uh, Penny is going to share with us a time of prayer. Loving Father, today on Passion Sunday, we reflect on the depths of despair that you must have felt as you approach the time of your arrest and crucifixion. We give thanks that whatever pain and suffering we may experience in this life, you understand and suffer that pain with us and walk alongside us through the valleys. We pray that more people will seek you and come to know that love and support. So many are suffering at the moment, feeling disconnected and lonely. The pandemic has taken a huge toll on so many lives. We are so thankful to the skills of the scientists who have produced an effective vaccine and we give thanks to all those currently involved in its rollout. We pray that in turn, all governments will work together to allow it to be distributed to all the peoples of the world and that petty quarrels and ideologies won't prevent this. As we wait to the sound of birdsong and cherish the emergence of spring after a long winter, help us not to forget the immense suffering in so many parts of the world, caused by fighting, leading to leading to massive human migration, causing poverty and starvation. We pray for those who hold power to soften their hearts and to recognize that we inhabit one beautiful planet and that your dearest wish must be for us to care for it and for each other at this time of crisis. We pray for peace. Father, in our close community, we pray for any known to us who are in any kind of difficulty at this time. Those who are sick and the bereaved, those who are anxious about their employment or their businesses, those whose families are in turmoil. Our school children and students who worry about their future prospects and their exams. Lord, help us to put our trust in you, to lay our worries at the foot of the cross. Help us to find joy in the small things. And as we start to emerge from this time of trial, to find a renewed sense of spirit and wisdom. We ask these things in the knowledge that you love and care for each one of us. Amen. Amen. So we uh, continue by saying the words of the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. And the colic for today. Glorious Father, you give up, gave up your Son out of love for the world. Lead us to ponder the mystery of his passion, that we may know eternal peace through the shedding of our Saviour's blood, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you, Steve. We'll have our second hymn now.
Thank you. May Christ who accepted the cup of sacrifice in obedience to the Father's will. Keep us steadfast as we walk with him the way of the cross. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with us and remain with us always. Amen. Unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Amen. Okay, I will uh, throw you into uh, uh, breakout rooms. Um, so please um, join them if you want to. And uh, have a good Sunday. And uh, we'll keep praying for you, Kathy, as you uh, head towards the 26th. Bless you.